Hi, and welcome back to Dorky Docs, where the focus on this week's video will be inflammatory bowel disease. We don't see as much as IVD in the community as our acute colleagues do in hospital, but needless to say, we need to be aware of a lot of the features and management. So knowing that, let's dive straight in. Let's start with ulcerative colitis, where the inflammatory process is distal in comparison to Crohn's disease. The disease site often starts in the rectum and works proximally and never really spreads past the ileo sequel valve. It's thought to be a continuous inflammatory process without skip lesions, with a bimodal distribution of presentation of patients usually between 15 to 26 years and 55 to 65 years. You'll need to be aware of some of the pathological findings, which include mainly superficial inflammation with no extension beyond the submucosa, the presence of pseudopolyps, crypt abscesses, with some of the radiological features including a toxic megacolon or lead pipe colon. Most patients, however, present with bloody diarrhea, abdominal pain and urgency. However, once diagnosed, the severity can be established as follows. Mild flare-ups include less than 4 stools daily with normal inflammatory markers, moderate flare-ups are between 4 to 6 stools daily, and severe flare-ups are more than 6 stools a day and being systemically unwell. This leads on to the treatment of UC flare-ups, which depends on the site of disease and its severity. Mild or moderate disease, if it's proctitis alone, the first-line treatment is rectal aminosalicylates, an example being mesalazine. If this doesn't work, it's usually oral aminosalicylates, and if a remission isn't achieved by then, steroids ought to be considered. If it's predominantly left-sided UC, including the sigmoid colon and proctitis, again, rectal aminosalicylates are first line, with oral tablets second, or a combination of oral aminosalicylates plus rectal steroids. If, however, there's widespread UC, then the first line treatment is typically rectal and oral aminosalicylates, plus a second line treatment of oral steroids in addition to oral aminosalicylates. However, if the disease classification is severe, this often requires hospital admission, where IV steroids or IV cyclosporin is considered. If, however, there's no improvement after 72 hours despite optimal therapy, surgery is usually considered. In regards to mild to moderate maintenance therapy, it again depends on the site of disease. So if it's proctitis and left-sided disease, rectal aminosalicylates or rectal plus oral aminosalicylates are considered. If it's widespread UC, it's just oral aminosalicylates alone. And if, however, there's more than two flare-ups a year, the addition of azathioprine or mercaptopurin should be considered. Crohn's disease, in contrast to UC, typically affects the terminal ileum, but can affect any part of the alimentary tract. Pathologically, there may be skip lesions, full depth inflammation with granulomatous disease, increased goblet cells, and endoscopically, there might be a cobblestone appearance with deep ulceration. Radiologically, however, you might see, typically on small bowel enemas, there might be possible strictures and rose thorn ulcerations. Symptoms of presentation slightly vary to UC, with the features often being quite vague, including lethargy and weight loss and abdominal pain. Patients often have non-bloody diarrhoea, but can also present with perianal disease, such as ulceration or skin tags. The management of Crohn's disease is also slightly different to ulcerative colitis. Acute remission is often achieved by steroids or budesonides, first line. Aminosalicylates are often second line, with azathioprine and mercaptopurin can be added on as additional therapy. Infliximab is useful in refractory disease, particularly if there's evidence of fistulae. But if, however, there's only mild perianal disease, metronidazole alone can be considered. Unfortunately, however, 80% of patients with Crohn's disease will end up having surgery, often because of terminal ileal strictures, bowel obstruction, or fistulae. Maintenance, however, is achieved by stopping smoking, but interestingly, it's actually helpful in UC. Azathioprine or mercaptopurin is first line for maintenance, with methotrexate as second line. However, if a patient is post-surgery, then aminosalicylate drugs are often used. However, one common exam question that you'll be bound to ask about is extra-intestinal manifestations of IBD, and I'll try and summarise them with the features below. The first one to mention is arthritis, which is the most common extra-intestinal manifestation. You could also see erythema nodosum, episcleritis, which is more common in Crohn's, osteoporosis, pyoderma granulosum, clubbing, primary sclerosing cholangitis, which is more common in UC, and uveitis, again, more common in UC. Well, I hope that helps. That was quite an intense overview of inflammatory bowel disease. 
Be sure to like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and be sure to hit the notifications button. We're also growing our Facebook group and Instagram page, so be sure to head over there with the links below. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.